thing and stand for truth. People oppose you. The Bible says in Peter, 1 Peter, don't be surprised when people say evil things about you because you've decided that you're updating your profile. You've decided that you're changing your status. You've decided that now you're not going to participate in those things anymore. So that little group you used to travel with and maybe at lunch, you stood around, made fun of that person. Now you don't go over to that group anymore. So now those kids are like, oh, are you better than I am? No, just not doing that anymore. I'm just different now. Well, well, what did you get? Religion? Well, no, I found Jesus. Just not doing it anymore. And they're going to laugh about you and say things about you and point the finger at you. It doesn't matter. People are always going to do that. People are always going to be opposing you. People are always going to be make, making, making jokes on you and laughing at you. Some people are your friends today and tomorrow your enemies. All right? So you, you don't base your decisions on how people feel about you because people's emotions change all the time, don't they? Don't they? Don't they say yes? Yes, they do, all right? So look, it's time to update your profile. It's time to advertise a new you. Look, some of you, uh, some of you guys, you, you are in a different place than Pastor Mike. Remember how Pastor Mike talked about the Nike shoes that he got? No. And how them things were awesome? They were, they were nice, right? Right? And you were just all over those things. Some of, some of you all, man, some of you all, you, you get new kicks every other week. You got, you got sharp clothes. Maybe you get a watch. You get something. And look, when you get that, do you put it under your bed and not wear it? No. What do you do? You wear it. You wear it. Wear it. Look, I remember when I got a swatch. Remember swatches? No. That's old. Come on. Look, I ain't that old, man. I'm not in the grave. Come on. Look, a swatch was a watch. And back in the day, it was the watch. All right? Don't be laughing at me, all right? Back in the day, it was the stuff, man. I had my swatch. Is there anybody else old in this place? Let me see your hand. Nobody knows swatches, bro. I'm going to leave this room and I'm going to jump off the cliff. All right? All right? So he's raising his hand like this. Like, yeah, I saw some black and white show. Look, it's not that old, all right? But look. I had a swatch, and I bought that. I actually think my parents bought it for me. But dude, I wore that thing, and I was like, telling time like this. Oh yeah, that's my swatch. See that? Yeah. Like, I mean, I was, it, it, maybe you get something. And you wear it, and you feel a sense of pride with it. And you walk differently, or you make sure, you know, you make sure people see it. Or you like, you know, you do things purposely, like, you know, you'll get out. You're, like, like I remember when the, the, the first time people started getting Max. You know, like they would just get out their Mac and they were just, you know, and it's just kind of just this whole, you almost felt like when they came out, there was this whole like way you had to behave if you had a Mac. And, you know, people had their Macs and their Starbucks and it's just like, you know, there's just something about them and really showy. And, you know, that was nothing wrong with having a Mac or whatever, but whatever it is for you, maybe people get a new ride. Have you ever seen people who clean their, who, who clean their car every day? They're washing their car like every day. Or like you drop, you drop like a small piece of a straw, and they pull over the side of the road, and they give you this half-hour lecture. I know you didn't put trash in my car. It's like, bro, I just dropped the straw thing. You know, it's like, get out now. It's like, oh, chill out. Like, you know, like, so have you ever met people like that? You know, they get their things, and they want to show them off, and you best not ruin them. And and look, what we do is this. All right. What we do is this. We get Jesus. We get Jesus and we hide him. What? We get Jesus and we hide him. We don't, we don't put him out there. We don't tell the world. We don't do what the Bible says. Jesus says this, which is almost as crazy as you getting a new car and leaving in the driveway. Alright? It's almost as crazy as that, Jesus says, when you when you have a light, when you have a light, you don't hide the light under a table, do you? How many of you, when you go home, all your parents' lamps are underneath tables or hiding in closets? No, where do you put them? You put them in the room on top of the table so that when it's dark, you turn it on and it lights up the room. That's what you do. Jesus says in the same way, let your light so shine before who? Men. That they would see your Father in heaven and glorify him. Look, we get Jesus and sometimes we hide him. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. You've got Jesus. Make it obvious. Show it off. Update who you are and what you're about. You know? And some people, man, they're always updating their status and updating their profile, you know, in terms of you know online, Facebook and stuff. And some people, it's funny, man, like like 
you can see them like you know they're they're single and together and single and together like three times a week. It's like whoa, uh, what, what just happened there? But like some people, man, they're all about making sure they update when something happens or they go somewhere. How about those people who are like, the, I mean, they update every time. They're like, oh, I just ate a wiki. Oh, I just walked ten feet. Ooh, it's so nice outside. Ooh, look at that bird. It's like, you know, and they're like taking pictures of everything and putting it on Instagram. It's like, dude, I don't want to see like your half-eaten burrito. Have you ever seen those people? It's like, I'm a Chipotle, thinking. Yeah. And it's like, it's like the half-eaten burrito. And I'm like, bro, it's like, what's next? Like, I just blew my nose. Like, you want to see that? Like, it's so nasty, man. Like, stop. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's like, Please don't say, like, I just went to the bathroom and take a picture of that. Please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, no way. No, shut up. No. No. Look, if any of you all do that, seriously, you're out. You're out of heaven. All right? We're going to pray. You're out. Out of heaven. Okay? Man. Look. You are the light of the world because Jesus Christ lives in you. However, however, you cannot... You, you cannot have your effect as the light is intended if you don't let Jesus shine bright. So show them off. We like to show a lot off. Let's show Jesus off. All right, so one, you're a person who commits to living biblical truth. Man, it's as easy as decide not to, not to hit somebody back, not to, not to curse somebody out when they wrong you, to, 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 to love your enemies and pray for them, and man, maybe go sit with somebody at the lunch table who doesn't have any friends, and just... You, you do it differently. You commit the biblical truth all right, in all of its essence. Two, you update your profile, man. You show off Jesus. You get it out there, all right? You are not an undercover Christian. All right, lastly, you do this. Lastly, you do this. You become a passionate loser for Jesus. Man, you become a loser for Jesus. I want to be a loser for Jesus. Jesus says this in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 27, that he said to all of them, the disciples and everybody who's around, he says, if anybody would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. And it goes on to say that what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet uh, lose or forfeit his very own soul? Jesus is calling us to lose our lives. Look, when Jesus said to pick up your cross and follow him, everybody knew what that was about. Now if you see somebody like, like dragging this cross on the side of the road, you're just, you're, you're just going to say they're a crazy person that escaped from the hospital. Yeah, like they're psycho. Like keep on driving quickly by them. All right? like, have you seen that guy with the uh, sandwich board? Down here by the TGI Fridays, who says like the man piece or whatever, yeah. or he's always oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I drive the online. Like, so sometimes, uh, sometimes I feel like God's calling me to pull over and talk to him, and I'm like, I don't know how it's gonna go. Yeah, anyways, 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 look. If people were 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 talking about the cross back then, it's very evident what that was. Uh, that was a symbol of death because the Romans crucified people all the time. So everybody knew this idea of carrying your cross was carrying it so that you would you would eventually die or be crucified. So the language Jesus is using is saying that when you follow me, it's no longer about you. It's no longer about you. How many of you know the book, The Purpose Driven Life? The very first sentence of the book, life is not about you. All right, so look, Jesus is trying to get something across us. It's not about us. 2 Timothy 1.8 says this, Do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, I'm his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel. Oh, become a passionate loser for Jesus. The Bible says, actually says this, Rejoice when people laugh at you for my name's sake, Jesus says. Rejoice when people make fun of you for, for, for my name's sake. Be happy. Be happy when people slander you. Be happy when people make fun of you. Be happy when people persecute you for my name's sake. Be happy. Kind, kind, of, kind of messed up, isn't it? Kind of different, isn't it? D.L. Moody says this. Says, set a man on fire and people will come from miles away to watch him burn. Set a man on fire, people will come from miles away to watch him burn. The idea is this, all right? We're not setting anybody on fire. The idea is that as you passionately become a person who burns bright for Jesus, people are going to look at you. 
People are going to see you differently. People are going to treat you differently. People are going to start coming to you when their life is, 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 is jacked up, messed up. People are going to start looking to you. People are going to start asking you for prayer. People are going to start looking at you differently. Now, some of that may be negative. You know, because isn't it true that sometimes things that people don't understand, they make fun of? Sometimes the reaction when they don't understand it is they make fun of it. My older brother does not understand the fact that my wife and I tithe and give 10% of our income to the local church. He makes fun of it. Well, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's, I understand because he doesn't understand. He can't. Why? Because the Apostle Paul says only the people who have the Spirit of God can understand spiritual things. And my prayer is that all of you in here would have the Spirit of God. And that all of you would want to be people who live for biblical truth. Man, change a, a, a stigma in a generation. Change a, lab, a, a, a label in your generation. Become people who live for biblical truth. Do it. Two, become somebody who makes it very evident that, that, that Jesus is inside of you. You do not get something new and awesome and hide it. You don't get an awesome pair of shoes. You don't go out and buy an awesome shirt to never wear it. You didn't get Jesus to hide it. All right? You got Jesus so that you can shine him bright like the light. Why? Because the world lives in darkness. Jesus is the light. Get him out there. All right? Lastly, become a passionate loser for him. Forget about you. Forget about you. The Bible says this, which is so difficult to do. The Bible says that you are supposed to look at others as, as more important than you. More valuable than you. You are to consider their needs before yours. So the person next to you, you're supposed to look at them and say, they're, they're, they're more important than me. Consider that person more important than you. And the person across the room and vice versa, and the, and the people you'll see today, they're more important. Why? Because, look, you already have Jesus. It's not about you anymore. It's about the people that don't. It's about your friends that don't. Maybe your family members that don't. It's about them. Become a passionate loser for Jesus. I guarantee, I guarantee that if you, if you do these things, I guarantee that Jesus will change your life. I guarantee that doing these things will make a difference in your life. I guarantee you that nobody will be confused about what you live for. Nobody will be confused about what you're about. I could ask anybody, because if I want to know who you are, I don't ask you, can you lie to me? If I want to know who you are, I ask your friends. If you want to know who I am, ask my wife. She'll tell you. She'll tell you if I live for Jesus. She'll tell you if I stand for biblical truth. She'll tell you if I pray with my family, if I read my word. She'll tell you. Because I can always make it look better than what it really is. So I want to be a person to, who, no matter who you ask about, about Pastor Kevin, they're like, oh, yeah, he's the person that lives for Jesus. I don't want one person to be like, well... No, nah, man, I mean, I, I saw him doing this other thing. I don't want that. And I think you guys don't want that too, amen? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord God, for your word. Your word is life. Your word is truth, Lord God. And I pray for every young person in this room right now in Jesus' name. God, that you would give us the power, the boldness of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to become people who love your word. God, to be able to commit to biblical truth, we have to first know biblical truth. And, be able, and, and to be able to know it, that means, God, that we have to open up your word on a daily basis and read it. God, I pray for any student in here who may be struggling with reading your word. God, I pray that you would encourage them today. And let them know, Lord God, that we don't have to read 100 pages every day. You don't have to feel like you have to read a book every day. God, you just want us to open your word. God, there are some times where I open your word and all I get is one verse. And that verse just resonates in my soul. And that verse, it, it just really touches me because it was the verse I needed to hear. God, you want us to be in your word. Sure, we're going to read more than one verse at certain points in, in time and as we mature, but God, I pray for any student here who feels, oh man, I haven't read my Bible in, in, in months, and oh man, I don't read a lot, you know, I don't read a lot of it anyways, or it's inconsistent. God, I pray you would encourage them today to go home tonight and to start over, start fresh, crack open their Bible, begin to dive into it and discover the truth that 
that, that is found in your word. And God, that we would apply that truth. God, that we would become people that shine our light bright for you. We want to shine bright for Jesus. Just like the stars, Lord God, illuminate the sky. We want to be your stars, God. We want to be your reflection on earth. We, we, we want you, Lord God, to be very evident in our life. Uh, we want to display you and update our profile. Lord, lastly, God, I pray that we would become passionate losers for you. God, that life would no longer be about us, Lord. But God, that we would serve it, it, the world in a radical way. Love the wor world in a radical way. God, maybe this week you're calling a student here to buy another student lunch or, or to give them a ride home from somewhere or to just take them out to the mall and treat them to some ice cream. Or, God, you're calling every one of us to do something that takes the emphasis away from us and puts it on Christ and puts it on others. Maybe you're calling someone in here to uh, give money to somebody who's going on a mission trip. Or maybe you're calling somebody in here to give a pair of shoes. To, 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 to allow somebody in a foreign country to be able to have shoes. God, you're calling us, Lord, to do something passionate, Lord God, that, that, that takes the emphasis off of us and puts it where it belongs on you. God, I pray that we would live for you in such a way that no matter who we ask, that they would say about us, oh man, that person lived for Jesus. There's no doubt beyond my my, my mind, that that person loved God. Man, God, I want that to be said of me. And God, I pray that it's said of all of us. Now, Lord, give us the strength to do it. And be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Pastor.